let's make a quick review of uh, what we were talking about the last time before we go on. So we were looking at variance in returns. Variance means the difference between the actual return and the return that we expected to get. We gave the example of the oil drilling firm with the high variance. So we're showing that diversification has an example in a mathematical and statistical way. So we looked at an example of investing in two companies. 10% variance and 20% variance. Okay? We asked if both stocks were perfectly correlated, then what would be the weighted average variance? Then the weighted average variance would be 15%. If we have half of the stock here and half of this stock here, it's going to be in the middle, 15%. So we made this weighted average calculation. Then in the second case, stocks 1 and 2 have a covariance of 0, or they have no relationship. So, from statistics, we can make this equation. We're not going to worry about where did we get this equation, or why did we get this equation, because that's a question for a statistics class, not the financial management class. Okay? Maybe you can study where this equation came from in the statistics class. But in the financial management class, we just understand that this is the equation. Okay? So, basically, one stock and another stock have a covariance. We're talking about variance here, not just any number. So, covariance is the relationship, like correlation, we talked in, about in the last class. So, one is moving up. And turn on the light there, please. So one is moving up. What's happening to the other one? Okay, covariance. So we, have, we are going to take this into account too in the equation. So the equation has the weight, this time squared, which makes the weight smaller, multiplied by the variance, plus the weight squared multiplied by the variance, plus two times both of the weights multiplied by the covariance. So, this is the key, that the covariance is added into the equation. In the last one, the covariance was 1, so we didn't need to put in the equation. Okay? So we end up, this time, we take the weight, 50% squared, multiplied by the variance, 10%, plus the weight, 50% squared, multiplied by the variance, 20%, plus twice, 50% by 50% by 0, that's going to be equals to 0 0.25 plus 0.5 plus 0 0.05 plus 0. So we get 7.5% in the end. Okay? So we notice that this number, 7.5% is lower than 15%, and actually it's even lower than 10%. So we had stock 1, it had a 10% variance. We had stock two, it had a 20%. Okay, the average was 15%. If I invest 50% in stock A, 50% in stock two, right? If they have the same correlation, it's 15%. But if, we, if they have no relationship, okay, here we have one, correlation, 15%. And if we have no relationship, the variance is in fact lower. It's 7.5%. Okay? And what we can notice here is that the variance is actually lower than the, if we just invested in stock 1. Okay? So if we just invested in stock 1, our risk or our variance is 10%. But if we invest in stock 1 and stock 2, even though stock 2 has a higher variance, it's riskier, we get a lower variance than stock 1. Okay? The reason is that they have no 
relationship. So it may be that while stock one is going up, stock two is going down. Okay? Stock one is going up, stock two is going down. Okay? Stock one is going down, stock two is going up. Okay? Do you understand? So that makes our list risk lower overall. We can have a lower risk than just stock one. Because stock two could be moving in the opposite direction. The price could be moving in the opposite direction. Do you understand that idea? That's the idea of diversification. But this is formula, mathematical formula, to calculate the benefit of diversification. Okay? So we look at variance as risk here. Variance is risk. How different is the stock price in the end from what we expected? That's the risk. Okay? And we see that if we invest in two stocks, even though they have higher variance, by investing in the two stocks together, we can make our variance lower. Even then, one of the lowest variance stock. Okay? So we can lower our risk using this method of investing in different stocks with different covariance or different correlation. It doesn't work. If they have the same covariance, the same correlation, it won't work. Okay? So the market portfolio is a portfolio means like uh, I have a portfolio of stocks. It means group of stocks or number of stocks together. Okay? So the market portfolio is the portfolio, the mix of stocks, portfolio is like mix, which gives us the lowest variance, and this is going to include every risky asset in the market. So if we add on more stocks here, and more stocks here, and more stocks here, okay, they don't all have the same relationship. So this is going to get lower and lower and lower, this number. Do you understand? As we add on more stocks, the stocks are also moving in the opposite directions. So we're reducing the variance and reducing the risk. So the market portfolio is every traded risky asset in the market. So if we could buy every asset in the world, then this is called a market portfolio. So if we could buy stocks in Japan, right, bonds in the US, okay? We can invest in real estate, you understand real estate. We can invest in gold, okay? So we invest in everything in the world. This is going to be a low variance investment. The more and more we add, statistically, the lower and lower the variance becomes. So, investors can then decide about how much risk they want to take. Okay? Uh, so, if you invest in just one stock, uh, or you invest in 10 stocks, which is made taking more risk? You invest in just one stock, or you invest in this, that stock and nine other companies? Which is riskier? Just one stock, right? So if I want to make money quickly, which should I do? Just invest in one stock or invest in 10 stocks? If I want to make a profit quickly. One stock. It's the same for return and risk. Okay, so investors can choose. Maybe you like risk. Maybe you don't like risk. Okay, you're going to diversify a lot. You like risk, so you say, last year Naver's stock price went up 100%, right? So I'm just going to invest in Naver because I want to get 100% next year, right? But you say, I'm going to invest in Naver and in Shinan Bank, okay? and in Amazon, and in Apple, and in a lot of other companies, because I want to make 10% next year, right? So he has a different risk idea than him. He wants to make quick money, but then of course, who's going to lose their money? You're going to lose just 10% if your stocks go down, right? But you're going to, you could lose 100%. Naver could go down 100%, okay? So, we can make some combination of an investment in a risk riskless asset like the US government bond, or we can invest in the market portfolio. Do you know Warren Buffet? Warren Buffet, famous investor. 
They interviewed him and they asked him, when you uh, die, when you pass away, what, are you going, what do you recommend for your wife and your children to do with the money? Okay? And he recommended to invest the money in the market portfolio, 90%. Okay? And 10% in European government bonds. So it's not that high risk investment. He's investing in the market portfolio and he's investing in government bonds. The reason he said this, he invests in government bonds, is that if the market portfolio, if the prices of the, in the market go down, does he want his wife to sell or keep it? The price goes down, so he buys the risky asset here, right? The market portfolio is doing well. Oh, global economic crisis, it all goes down, right? Should his wife sell the stock or not? No, right? So the reason he wants her to buy bonds is here, she can sell the bonds. Okay, do you understand? Keep the stock. Because what's going to happen? It's going to go back up again, right? So if she sells here, then they lost money. So he has that kind of idea for the longer term investment. Okay, he can use the dividends. So an example of the market portfolio is the S&P 500. That is, it's not practical to buy every stock in the world, okay? And every real estate, and every gold, and ev a little part of everything. It's not possible. It's not practical because of <coughs> transaction cost. We have to pay to buy the stocks. We have to pay fees to everybody, okay? So it may be easier just to invest in an index fund. Index fund follows an index. Index is the standard of Poor's 500. So we can just explain, the Standard & Poor's 500 is an important index to understand in, in finance. So we can ex just Google that, right? And just look at some of the companies on Wikipedia, okay? So Standard & Poor's 500 index, Wikipedia. So these are 500 companies based on the market capitalization. Market capitalization means Stock price multiplied by number of stocks. Okay? So based on the amount of their equity value. So the 500 biggest companies buy equity in the world. Okay? In the US, sorry. So uh, we can go down here. We can see that over time it has done well, the S&P 500 index. So it's quite diversified because we invest, we, uh, invest in 500 different companies, okay? Do you know these companies? 3M, Accenture, what industry is it? Healthcare, IT, consumer, utilities. Do you understand utilities? Electricity, IT, financials, okay? Consumer, staples, financials, healthcare, industrials, energy. Maybe not doing that well these days, energy companies. The oil price is very low, okay? But we didn't only invest in the energy company. If we only invested in the energy company, we'd be losing money. But we invest in 500 companies. So even though the energy company loses money, maybe the, the telecommunication services company is making a profit, like AT&T. Okay, that's like KT in Korea, okay? Um, banks, right, distillers, making alcohol, oil and gas, hotels. So, a lot of famous companies or their, their head companies are here, okay? Uh, we can expect, if we go down, we can see Harley Davidson, HP, you should know Intel, okay? We'll see Microsoft when we get down to M, okay? So, here's Microsoft. Coca-Cola is going to be there, Disney, all of the major corporations. So we invest, well, that's what, what uh, Warren Buffet suggests to his wife, okay? Invest in all of these companies together. That's like market portfolio. Also, the US has an advantage because most of these US companies are quite global companies. So I could invest in a company which is doing business in Australia, right? But I could also invest in Philip Morris. Do you know Philip Morris? 
Philip Morris is selling cigarettes in Australia. So they are already invested in the Australian economy. Okay? So we couldn't really say if we invested in the Korean index that that would be like, it would be a market portfolio for Korea, but not really a, market, a global index, right? Because maybe the Korean companies are not as global as the American companies, okay? But this, of course, is biased towards the US, but if we look at the top 10 companies in the world, maybe seven of them are from the US. So we can also find the global index, right? We can invest in a global index, but in a global index, what, where, what country are most of the companies from? If we invest in the global index, companies in the world, top companies in the world, what country is it going to be from, most of the companies? Yes. The US. We're going to find we're going to end up investing in many of these companies anyway, right? Uh, Morgan Stanley has an index for the world. <coughs> Morgan Stanley is a US investment bank. So Morgan Stanley Global Index, right? So we can see here they have a global index called the MSCI, okay? Morgan Stanley uh, Indexes. So we have here is the world. MSCI has the world index. <coughs> so we can see this is the index since 2011. It's been going up, right? That's why Warren Buffet wants his wife to invest in those kind of index, right? So these kind of countries are in the index, mainly developed countries, right? So they take companies across 23 developed markets, right? And they have a lot of companies from these 23 different developed countries. Uh, that is about six. 6,000 securities, so 6,000 different companies across 23 countries, okay? And that is like 85% of the world's uh, equity market covered in this index. So this, is, this should be quite stable and safe investment because it's very well diversified, right? So, uh, Personally, I might decide, if I decide to invest, I might decide to invest in this kind of index too, right? Because I don't want to take much risk, maybe. It's not going to go up tomorrow from 1,200 to 5,000, okay? Because we're talking about 6,000 different companies, okay? But it's not going to go down either that much, okay? It's more stable and reflects kind of the growth of the world economy. So that's just putting this idea of diversification into practical idea for investment, okay? So, if your grandmother asks you where to invest her money, what are you going to say to her? She says, you're very smart, you're a university student. Tell me, what should I do with my saving, with my money? What are you going to say to your grandmother? Hmm? Pretend I'm your grandmother. Don't know? That's the bet. That's the correct answer, right? You have to tell your grandmother. I don't know. Talk to the fi qualified financial advisor. I'm just a student, right? So anyway, if she put a gun to your head, she put a gun to your head and said, "Tell me an answer." What would you say? You have to answer, or she's going to shoot you. What should she do with her money? Where should she invest her money? Hmm? Put it all in neighbor? Put all her money into neighbor? Oh, then what? Hmm? Just get all her money and, and put it into one stock, like Microsoft? Just buy Microsoft stock? What about taking more of a advice? Hmm? 
buy some, try to buy the market portfolio, right? So maybe the US index or the MSCI global index, okay, of 500 or 6,000 companies, that's going to be a more stable place for her to put her money, okay? And she can put some money in bonds too, but only if she puts a gun to your head. Because later, if you make a mistake, then she's going to blame you. She lost all her money. It's all your fault, right? So it's always better to say, ask them to talk to the professional, professional advisor. Okay? But this is a general one that we could use for investing. Idea. We understand the idea. Okay? So we should know that there is no reason that the market portfolio will perform better than the riskless investment. So we have the choice. We can invest in the US bond. How much will we get a year investing in the US bond? About. How much will we get every year? About 2%, okay? Or we can invest in the market portfolio, which maybe we expect to get, obviously higher than 2%, let's say we expect to get 8%, okay? Expected return 8%, expected return 2%, okay? Now, can we say that this is going to be performed better than this? Will we get more money investing here because the expected return is higher? Who says yes? Hands up. Expected return investing in the world index or the S&P 500 is 8%. That's the expected return. Okay? We invest in the US government bond, we are getting 2%. So do you think we can be sure we're going to get more investing here? Hands up. Who thinks, yes, we're sure, we can get more money investing here in the market portfolio. Higher expected returns. Hands up, who thinks, no, we're not sure. Okay, why are you not sure? Because it's risky. So what does that mean, it's risky? Uh, if uh, the economy of the world will fall, we will lose our money, but the government's uh, US bonds is riskless. Yes. Okay, this one is always going to get 2%, right? But this one, some years it could be up 10%, some years down 10%, okay? It's more risky. So, in finance we have to think about risk and return. We may expect a higher return by investing in the market portfolio, but we are taking a risk of losing our money. We don't have any risk of losing our money here, okay? So, over the long term, it shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter. We invest here or we invest here. We should get the same return over the long term. Right? Because this one will go up higher but also down more. Up more and down more. Up more and down more. Okay? So, in the market portfolio, some years we win and get more than the expected return. Some years we lose and get yeah, less. It's our attitude to risk that causes us to choose one investment over another. I like more risk, I'll invest in the market portfolio. I don't like risk, I'll invest in bonds. Okay? I want more risk, I'll invest in just one stock, not the market portfolio. Okay? I like a really a lot of risk, I'll get into private equity. Private equity is giving money to startups. Okay? I want even more risk, I'll go to the casino and put money on black or red. Okay? Do you understand? So we have a lot of choices what we could do with our money with risk and return. This is the safest one. This one is not that risky. Then we have less stock, right? Maybe get a loan and buy stock is risky. Invest in private equity, gambling. Do you like gambling? No, sometimes. No. Gambling is not that big in Korea, but in other countries it's bigger, right? My brother, younger brother, likes, he works for uh, some uh, betting agency, making the odds, so he likes gambling on horses sometimes. <coughs> so, uh, But we should notice that this is in theory. Actually, in practice, the market portfolio does do better than the bonds. If we look at what actually happened in history, the S&P 500 has performed better than just investing in bonds, okay? Why? One reason may be because companies are productive, okay? Companies are, can be quite productive. Make a new technology, right? Invent something. 
So that's why Warren Buffet wants to invest in the market portfolio, okay? Even though in theory, shouldn't get any more money. In practice, we've seen in the past, investing in the S&P 500 has uh, been good. Also, Warren Buffet made a bet with a money manager. Warren Buffet bet that the, the market portfolio would do better than the money manager. So the money manager picked just some stocks that, in his opinion, would be good. Right? So he picks just Yahoo and Apple and blah blah blah. And then they have to wait for five years. And then the winner got one million dollars. So who do you think won? The person who was trying to pick the stocks individually? Or Ron Buffet who invested in the 500 biggest companies? Yes, Ron Buffet was the winner. Right? <coughs> he just invested across all the 500 companies. He did better than the guy who was trying to pick and choose the companies. Okay? One of the reasons is the transaction cost. If you're trying to pick and choose the company, often they buy and trade a lot. Buy and sell a lot of stocks very often. Right? So they have a high transaction cost. Every time you buy and sell the stock, you have to pay a fee. But Warren Buffet just leaves there for five years without touching the stock. Okay? So do you have any questions about diversification and the market portfolio? So then let's discuss the questions with our partner. So you can find these questions in your book, the end of the section. So this is on page 26, and it's question 20, 21, 22. So you can read the question on page 26 in your book.
diversification can anybody tell me okay we can lower our risk okay by investing across different things what is the market portfolio what is the market portfolio can anybody tell me Okay, you invest in nearly every different asset around the world, or as many assets as you can around the world. Okay? So number three, hands up. Who thinks A is the correct answer? Who thinks B is the correct answer? Everybody has to put up their hand for number three. Right, which of the following investors would a risk averse, don't like risk investor prefer? Hands up, A, B. All you guys didn't put up your hands. You need to choose. Take another 30 seconds to think about it and choose one of these investments. Somebody who doesn't like risk, are they going to choose investment A or investment B? Correlation. The key is the correlation, right? Okay, so Let's try again. Hands up. Who thinks A? Hands up. Who thinks B? 
Okay, we saw some more hands that time, so P is the correct answer. So if we want risk, we have stocks which are highly correlated. It means they move together. If the stock moves together, then it's... They both go up at the same time. They both go down at the same time. It's riskier. Okay? If the stocks are inversely correlated, it means this one is going up, this one is going down. This one is going down, this one is going up. Okay? Not as risky. Okay? I get a profit here and a loss here. Profit here and loss here. So not, it evens out. Not as risky. Okay? Then, <coughs> let's calculate the weighted average of your return. So we practiced in the last class weighted average. So you have to calculate your return. You have 10% of stock A, 10% of stock B, 80% of stock C. Last year you made 20%, $20 in stock A, $50 in stock B, and stock C was minus 10. Calculate the weighted average of your return. How much money did you make last year? Okay? Use the weighted average to calculate. The weighted average equation. Use it to calculate how much money you made last year. Okay, so what should I write here on the first slide? What should I write here? Point one times twenty dollars. So ten percent of stock A of twenty dollars. So point one multiplied by twenty. What's next? Plus point one times fifty. So stock B is ten percent fifty dollars. Okay, plus Point A times minus 10. minus 10. That's stock C. So we have minus one. 2 plus 5 plus minus, eight. minus 8 minus one. equals minus 1. So we lost $1 last year. Okay? Does everybody see that? Stock A is 10%. Point 0.1 multiplied by 20. Plus, point plus, okay? So you should be able to see, when we have a portfolio, this is a portfolio. Most investors have a portfolio, they don't invest in just one thing, they invest in different things. So we should be able to figure out how much money did we make last year, depending on what percent of our portfolio each investment was. Okay, any questions? Okay then, the last one. We are going to try the diversification equation using the equation to show the diversification benefit. Okay? So you have a portfolio of two stocks. Stock A has a variance of 15%. Stock B has a variance of 30%. It's riskier. The covariance of stock A and B is 5%. Calculate the variance of the portfolio. We have 30% of stock A and 70% of stock B. So you need to look at the equation we looked at at the start of the class on page 24. Okay. So use that equation to calculate the variance.
So this stock has this variance. This stock has this variance. But we can't use just simple weighted average because the stocks have a covariance. They have a relationship between them. Okay? So we need to use the second equation. Because they have a relationship, maybe one is going up, another is going down. We need to use the second equation for, to find our portfolio variance on page 24. properly, just writing out the equation properly with the num correct number in the correct place, you can already get half the points. Okay? So if you write out the correct equation with the correct number in the correct place, you get half the points just for doing that. Then later you make a mistake in the calculation, you just lose half the points. So writing out this equation here at the top is half the points. Just writing this is half the points. Okay? Do that for portfolio variants. <laughs> Start. We need to use this equation. So we need to put the numbers, right? So you don't have to overcomplicate it. We need to put the numbers in the correct place. So what is weight one? Weight one. Point three. Thirty percent of A and seventy percent of B. That's the weights. I have thirty percent of A and seventy percent of B. Okay, so it's going to be 0.3 squared, okay? What's the variance of 1? 5, okay, and then that's going to be plus 0 0.7 squared times 0 0.3, okay, and then plus twice, we already look, weight 1 is 0.3, Wait, 2 is 0.7, okay, and then 0 0.05, okay, so then we won't do out all the calculation, okay, but you get half points for writing out properly the equation, putting the right thing in the right place, okay, then we finish the calculation, we get our answer, okay, do you have any question? Okay, so... Let's take a break then uh, for 10 minutes.